So I'm so pleased that we're here in Cambridge for the next in our series of the medical law seminars. This one is on the Mental Capacity Act. How do you establish someone has capacity if you're not sure? How can you help them prove they've got capacity? And if they don't have capacity, how can you establish that too? The Mental Capacity Act touches many professions, um, doctors and, and lawyers, as well as many people, service users, carers, um, health professionals from all sorts of different backgrounds. Um, and this is also work that's inherently interdisciplinary. And it's, it's been a privilege of the project to talk to audiences made up of clinicians and audiences made up of lawyers. And the best thing is when you have different people from different backgrounds in the same room thinking through the same problems together and giving those different perspectives on these really complex challenges. We've got Princess Minketi Udom, who's got lived experience of caring for someone who has at times lacked mental capacity and sharing with us some of her experiences of difficulty that she's encountered and her uh, loved one has encountered has been really um, enlightening. I work in the health and social care sector um, and I am here today as um, someone with lived experience as a carer. If you're going to make decisions for people, it needs to be co-produced. They need to be part of it from the very beginning um, or you're just making decisions that don't make sense, might not be followed, probably won't work long term. In order to actually get a solution and move and drive forward system-wise, it requires collaboration. But I think the voice of those people who actually live the experience needs to be central in the work being done because they're the people who are experts. There are some really practical steps and future research and that's particularly around how we can use digital technology to make uh, complex capacity assessments more manageable by making sure that previous collaborative capacity assessments that have been created when the service user was well can be accessible at those crunch times when difficult decisions need to be made about that person's capacity when they're unwell. And so I was quite excited to tell people about some of the work that we've done collaborating with uh, digital companies um, to produce electronic documents with the hope of making them accessible across digital systems to make sure that this sort of work is accessible to, to the most amount of people and remove, remove barriers. It's about recognising that in those genuinely difficult situations the onus is to do a better job and a cleaner, a clearer job so that people can come back and say I disagree and this is why I disagree. Ultimately we want to take away from today how we can improve how we can listen to people better, how we can understand what they would be like, how we can understand how they function so that we can really help them prove they've got capacity and also how it is they can prove they don't.